sandblasting extravaganza and um, this is our first initial sandblasting so basically we use um, one type of rough bead uh, glass bead to blast away all the rubbish etc and we'll do this for all the parts for the engine crankcase and etc and then what I'll do is I'll change out the sand for a cleaner version that I have and I'm constantly doing this swapping it backwards and forwards um, so you don't blast stuff into the casting um, so this is like I say a preliminary blast now the weird thing is that I've noticed that either these valve seats have been recut which I doubt they have but either way, either someone's recut these valves or these are from the factory and they are shocking and the reason why they are shocking is because they are not perpendicular to the valve seat, uh, to the valve guard or they may be but then that means the seats aren't and I'll show you what I mean if we bring you in I'll try and get this right I bring you in this is the first cut this is the second cut and this is the third cut so these are three cut valves but the weirdest thing is is that the, the third valve cut gets really thin so it's this depth here and then there's the seat and we are pitted quite badly so now usually I wouldn't blast I'll protect the um, valve seats but I know I was going to re-grind these anyway because I could see this pitting. You can see all this pitting here. That's going to need to be ground, um, ground out. But you can slightly see this variation on the exhaust valves. But if we go to the inlet valves, you can really see there's some corrosion there. You can see that. Yeah, you should be able to. There's some corrosion here. Um, which actually, this is the, this is the seat, this one, and then this one is the um, the back cut. But as we go round, you can see right there that the second cut is really the, the the last cut, the back cut is really stupidly thin. Or if I try and rotate it there, can you see that? Oh, miles out! Here we go. There we go. Um, so you can see here that we have the back cut, the seat cut, and then the front cut. And so there's your seat there. This is the back cut. You see the width of that cut. As you turn it round to the same place on the other side, and it's really thin. Which means that these were cut not perpendicular. To the valve guide which I doubt or the valve seat itself isn't perpendicular when it was inserted now it's not the end of the world but it's just a bit a bit shoddy so I don't know I can't really tell I'd say these are the original cuts um, but if that if that is the case that's bad bad Honda and if it isn't the case, it's bad whoever else who's done the recut. Um, but I reckon it's more than likely that the uh, seat isn't perpendicular, which would rest in the hands of Honda. So if I insert this valve, our cleaned up valve, got an even valve Let me bring you out a minute. we've got an even valve gap all the way around and that seems like it's not rocking the valve seems pretty sturdy um, but it just doesn't seem odd it seems like the valve um, the valve seat 
It's not in the right place. I can see it here, but you probably can't see it. The valve is oscillating up and down ever so slightly. Now we need to test if that's the actual valve. The valve guard or the seat. But uh, that's not brilliant. Again, I would block off the uh, the valve guards. Um, <coughs> however, we're going to be popping in some new valve, these uh, valve guards popping these out and putting some new ones in. Um, what I do do is, as it said on the screen, but I'll just mention it in person, is you try and not directly blast at these seating surfaces. Now the top mating surface is here, this top mating surface where the gasket goes, and this surface here, and these surfaces here where the rockers go. Um, I'm not too bothered about blasting because I'll skim cut them ever so slightly. Same with the head surface here, we're going to skim this and take absolute bugger all off. But we're going to skim this. You can even use this as a good indication, if you could use a, um, a granite block and you're going to lap the surfaces, which is not a bad idea whatsoever, it's good to do this and leave this like this, we'll blast all these residual bits of crap off. And then we'll lap this surface and probably the other surface, probably not even machine it. And. Um, you'll be able to clearly see which bits are high and which bits are low because the sandblasting surfaces will be obvious to see compared to the nice shiny new metal new alley the ports need cleaning out a bit more you can see the uh, copper washer that's inserted the exhaust gasket um, are the exhaust? no it's the, yeah that is the exhaust, the exhaust gasket because it is cool um, so we need to take out these studs here for the exhaust side and um, do a few bit, bits and pieces on this and we'll uh, we're going to grind and polish the combustion chamber so it's nice and shiny stop carbon sticking um, may drill out and uh, helicoil the uh, spark, plug thre uh, spark plug thread and um, do a port job because you can see that port in there, the inlet port. Now the uh, shit is out of the way. The bridge is a bit meh. There's a lot of gruff nuts in there, as you can see. But it's cleaned up pretty all right compared to what it was. Um, yeah, I'm pretty chuffed. That as far as I can tell, there's not stupidly obvious cracks. Yes, it needs. Um, not magnafluxing, but it needs the dye. We might dye it. But I can't see any obvious... I've had a good inspection of this, not in front of the camera, but a good inspection of this. So we'll crack on with the other one, we'll do the... Um, we'll do the crankcase. Now when we do the crankcase, um, or the actual, you know, the entire engine block, we will protect the cylinders, we will protect all the main bearings, we will protect Anywhere where da uh, bearings, uh, bearing housings, we will protect. Um, anywhere where a dowel pin goes in, etc. And um, because there's nothing to do, I know I'm going to regrind these seats, and I know that I'm going to pop out the valve guides, and I also know that I'm going to home um, lap all these uh, mating surfaces. So because I know I'm going to do that, it doesn't matter if I blast it. Um, you would do have to be very careful to be blasting especially on a machine surface because it will cause that surface to be a canyon in a sense and it's an argument I've had with a couple of people in the past you don't really need to lap this surface uh, your head mating surface because your gasket is going to squish between the two and the more valleys and the more rough that surface is it will actually make a better mating surface because the, ga the gasket has got to be squashed in between the two and that will fill all the nooks and crannies that are in here all the little microscopic um, the, um, valleys and whatnot. so 
anywhere where you have a gasket that is crushed, proper crushed like the head is, um, having a rough surface isn't really a bad idea. But that's open for debate. It's like I was told by my old man, rust in a cylinder, a little bit of rust in your cylinder isn't a bad thing because um, it helps hold oil. But anyway, so we'll crack on with the rest of it and uh, we'll see where we go from here.